Okay, we should be good to go. So this is the first of what I'm calling market research. This is where I'm going to be talking to a player in the Bay Area and maybe in some cases other players all over the, the world. But starting off here with Martin, who lives in Sacramento, do you want to kind of introduce yourself? And specifically what we're talking about today is, is Gabe and Gabe uh, post honor profit. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about why you play Gabe as well. Absolutely. So uh, I'm Martin. I post as a Huba Jew in most places on the internet. Um, so I've been playing Gabe and Wayland since uh, the game came out. Uh, one thing I think makes Gabe really good that doesn't get talked about enough, I mean obviously he's he's criminal, you get a count siphon, it's very aggressive. Uh, but one thing is his threat on Archives is very large with Sneak Door Beta. So he very effectively threatens all three centrals from a really early point in the game. And I've won games just off, oh the Corp Mulligan, and I have a Sneak Door Beta and ideally a Desperado in my hand, and I've just won by like turn four, because the game's stupid like that sometimes. And you also, uh, your Gabe build has a way to pressure R&D, which has mostly been indexing from what I've seen, so you're pretty happy with that, it seems like. Yes, I didn't run anything for R&D, just because R&D is naturally kind of the most vulnerable. You can't do anything to protect it, you have no control over it. So, I mean, there's just naturally pressure there, plus Desperado and Data Sucker. But I switched to one of indexing, which is a really good haymaker card for like, okay, I've had four or five points. I have a very efficient kind of rig. I know I can get through R&D and let's just end this in one turn. Right. And I should say, uh, after kind of looking over your deck list, this was probably about four months ago. Um, before Honor Profit came out, and I was looking over your deck list, and I, I said, this this sounds like fun, and I started playing it, and I, start, I played it for about three or four months there, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's it's I, What I really like about it, and another thing, um, I don't know if you mentioned this yet, but it really makes its economy by running, you know? There's not a whole lot of econ card in, the, in that deck. It, there's some uh, armitage that you have to cover like those weird edge cases, but largely you want to just be making your money by running. Um, if you want to right. That. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think running's the basically running is netrunner. Like that's what the game is, and everything else kind of revolves around it. So, I wanted a deck that could be. I I, I play aggressively in any sort of game that I play in general. I like to play fast decks and or rush down characters in fighting games. And I so I thought, okay, if I can run as often as possible. I don't need multi-accessing. Like, it was really common before... Um, I want to say before the spin cycle, probably, uh, everyone considered some multi-access cards mandatory. Like, you had to run R&D Interface, or you had to run Microsoft. And I kind of said, well, I want a deck that's just... Its runs are so efficient, I can essentially run for free, or even for a profit. And that's just my pressure. And I won't lock R&D or anything. I'm just running so much you can't help but cough up agenda points. And uh, that probably explains why you choose Gabe specifically um, over Andromeda and and more recently over the, the new criminals is just his uh, plus two credits with those two avenues attack on HQ through R and uh, through Sneak Door and R and D runs uh, makes those HQ runs so cheap. And uh, yeah, like you said, you, you're trying to really get a profit on your runs if you can. So what I wanted to go into right. is where is Gabe now that Honor and Profit has come out? Um, specifically, it seems like they're really trying to push more of a resource criminal. And if you've been playing around with that, and maybe if you just want to talk, uh, you know, where you th see Gabe going now that Honor and Profit is out. Okay, so I think right now there's actually two very good ways. Like, Gabe, there's actually two Gabe decks where I think there used to be one. I th What I've done, I've kind of stuck to, uh, I haven't gone chasing waterfalls. I've mainly stuck to the valleys and the rivers I'm used to. Is that how that goes? I don't want to say. All right. I'm not Whatever. sure what you're referencing um, right now. I'm, I'm trying here. It's, uh, it's a TLC song. Um, but uh, I've mostly, so I've been doing the same thing where I don't run resources. Um, I have put in three planned assault because planned assault is absurd. Uh, it's more account siphons, but it's also, uh, I now have four indexing if I need it. I have four inside jobs. Uh, I can. Is that from the heap as well? That's our honor and profit. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, is um, is that from? You're saying you have four. Does that does that tutor from oh, the heap as well? No, it doesn't. But in the sense that I can g 
get it. Uh, I guess it's not really four, but in the sense I have four chances to draw it. Is yeah, that's right. I, that's what you're that. saying. Yeah, it's it's so, more consistent. Yeah, yeah. So and it also means I can add... run a little bit more toolboxy. Like I don't really like inside job because I feel like a lot of games it just doesn't do anything, but you need it because that threat needs to be real. And with planned assault, I so can just have one. one occasionally, job? yeah, I run one inside job, and occasionally it's amazing. And if I really want to get growth, I can go. Click one, install same old thing. Click two and three, get planned assault, which costs an extra click. Now I'm inside job. Like, yeah, like I can recur planned assault to get... It's, I mean, that's not going to come up too much, but it is a powerful tool to have for basically no cost. I mean, the main thing you'll do is account siphon. That's like 60%, 70% of why planned assault's there. But it also, I mean, it kind of frees up its own card space, which is really nice. I don't have to cut anything because whatever I'm cutting... I can use Planned Assault for because it lets me run fewer run events. You know, that are like like things like I'd... Inside Job, which are kind of, you know, okay. But right. occasionally they're huge blow ups, so you, you want them. I actually did the same thing. I, I went down to one Inside Job, two Planned Assault. I actually went down to two Account Siphon, but. Um, and then I also did uh, one out. Legwork. Get out now. Legwork Go. seemed like a Go. really strong card with the fast advance. Yeah, you're banished from the land of criminal. Go back to playing. Because <laughs> I admitted to going down to two account siphon. Why would you play that deck? It's just, no. Um, no, actually, I have one of legwork as one of my mini toolbox events. I actually have, cut, to make room, because I, I wanted a legwork, I needed three planned assaults. Uh, I cut uh, emergency shutdown from the deck, which oh, wow. I am very nervous. I'm very nervous about, because I'm basically relying on the meta to fix it for me, because I don't think expensive ice is good, um, and I think very, very few people play it, at least in the bay, and I, I think, you know, fair enough, like, it, it's a more inconsistent deck, um, it's completely crippled by emergency shutdown, so I'm kind of relying on not running it, and just trusting other decks to discourage it, so that I might, know, I mean, um... you might, if, you might be in a different meta and be like, Martin's a maniac, I'm going to get murdered by HB Redcoats or something. But um, I think it's fine. I, I I don't... A lot of the time, I think the last six months, the best thing I got was Grim. That's pretty good. But, you know, it's not like how it used to be where people would run Hadrian's Wall. And if your opponent runs Hadrian's Wall, you can beat them anyway. That's not a good card. Right. Um, but it, yeah, it leg is work, depressing uh, if solid. that gets... Uh rezzed over an important server. If that gets rezzed over HQ early in the game and they have the money and they recover from it, that could be a little bit disheartening. Yeah, that's... Yeah, but... I mean, you spent 10 credits to not hurt me at all. You just stopped the run. Right. I mean, a wall of static would have done something pretty similar. Um, and yeah, you can kind of get back up from it and you can do cool things, but I'll just fim it. Um, or I'll just go... I'll just get enough data sucker counters from running R&D and archives so much because you spent $10 on ice that I'll just parasite it. Worst comes to worst. Um, but yeah, that's not, I mean, that's not a... Well, we should, we should mention that really quickly yeah. about your build is that you do use a lot of parasites to uh, try and make the runs cheap throughout the whole game. Is that's kind of the yes, function I, of the I, I used to run three. I cut one for one of night because night can be tutored and... Um, a, like, NBN Fast Advance is really scary when they score an Astro Script, so I kind of put it in there, mainly for that matchup, like, say, okay, I have two ice really quickly, um, I'm going to rush something out, and I can, you know, uh, install Knight, get it on the back, and use Inside Job, or Plant Assault for Inside Job. Uh, wait, is that enough? No, that's not enough clicks. Whatever. Um, I can get, I can try to get in there, um, if they try to sneak one by me. Um... But yeah, I run two parasites because it is. It, I need to make the run as cheap as possible so I can continue pressuring servers. And occasionally, uh, there will be cards that just ruin that. And uh, some of them are low strength, some of them are high strength. But in either case, I just want to murder them. It's also nice because it gets around Chimera and other. There, it's also a tool just to get right. in early. But so it kind of does both, and it's just generally really useful. And I I really hated giving up one to go to night. But honestly, Knight most of the time is a Parasite. And you got an Account right. Siphon in, so yay. 
Yeah, it's really strong for getting those account siphons. I've been having a lot of trouble recently with taxing ice. Like, uh, just recently I played a guy that had a bunch of RSVP. He was playing with Rainbow, Eli's, things like that. And it was just very annoying because uh, Parasite basically wasn't going to be too effective. You know, I could take out one Rainbow, but then he's going to res an Eli right in front of it. Um, and uh, emergency shutdowns obviously don't do anything in that case. So that was a very difficult matchup to play against with this uh, this Gabe deck. I don't know if you've come across yeah, two Yeah, I'd like say um, they are. I actually say the number one worst thing uh, is Kaduki isn't making news. Like, that's really rough for Gabe to deal with because it's very expensive. And then to get it out, I have to play Fem cause I'm, or use a Fairy, which is a complete waste of a Fairy. Um, and it's a very obnoxious, very taxing ice. Um, more people should play Kaduki, uh, but actually don't because then my job's hard. But um, right. well, especially I don't know. I like think... you said in making news, it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, think in any other deck, it's just not good because uh, Kate is, exists as <laughs> pretty strong in the meta, and uh, and Vromita is still no slouch. But I, yeah, Kadukius is really bad. Uh, Rainbow, I'm just unimpressed with because I think it's. I mean, anything can break it, and as taxing ice goes, you can do better. Eli's super good. Like uh, Eli's a pain in the butt. Right. So I like Rainbow's to... what? Uh, Rainbow's it's basically for, for a Bastion blade. that's one less, but then it has all three ice types, right? right? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's purely uh... taxing. Like it's it's pretty risky to put on a remote and hope to score anything out behind it. But over like R and D yeah. at the start of the game, it's it's pretty annoying. I mean, it is uh... it is kind of like an Eli. But it's you know it's uh, one less to break. It's it's an interesting piece of ice. It's uh, but in yeah, mind, it's, it really it's... is just a taxing thing. Yeah, um, and it's a I don't know. It doesn't thing. bother me too much because it like it's I'm usually fine seeing it because that means whatever breaker I just kind of happen to draw naturally, I can throw it down and then index or account siphon. And yeah, definitely. So uh, like the events are powerful enough. I'm like ah okay. Um, it's it's obnoxious, but um. With only two parasites in the deck, I got to my, pick my targets, and I think that one uh, isn't going to keep me out. Like I would parasite something where I can't draw a, bre a barrier breaker, and I just need to get through Ice Wall. I'll use it, and so Rainbow's not going to do that, and it's also not going to tax me hard enough compared to like a Toll Booth, where I would be like, I happily murder that. Uh, Fem target for sure. <laughs> Um, so well, I mean, in, in this hypothetical the... world, I've I've already used Fem, I guess. I don't know. Oh yeah. Um, have you played around with the central breakers at all? And if so, um, what do you think of them? Ignoring breach, which I think everyone agrees is garbage. Yeah, breach is not. Mm, um, four to get through wall of static is the worst thing I've heard. I had an ice wall but, the other night with um, my tenon deck, and I advanced it like two times, I think it was, to uh, get it outside. Of, like, Breach was going to cost four to get through an ice wall, which was ridiculous. Yeah, it's... Um, okay, so Breach isn't good. So you still run Corroder. Corroder is still uncontested king of boring town. It's just the best barrier breaker. Um, uh, okay, so here's the weird, here's the weird thing about the central breakers. I did not think they would be good because I thought not running on remotes is too limiting. Your AI options in criminal are like, you don't have Atman or something weird like that. Um, so I did not think they'd be good, but there's the silhouette deck that runs uh, quest completed. And that kind of looks real. So um, I really didn't think that would be a thing, but I think in that specific deck, I think with Quest Quest completed, they're very very good. Alias specifically, um, just look. It looks. I, I use that, and I'm using Passport. But Passport. Um, the problem with Passport is there seems to be enough end the run um, code gates where it's just really annoying. Now with Quandary out too, you see a Quandary Enigma on a remote, and uh, yeah. So Alias seems pretty solid not, though, because yeah. especially with one Data Sucker token, Alias is just strictly better than Ninja. And it, Alias, unlike Ninja, just kind of... Ninja has problems with all those middle strength ice. Alias is a lot more reasonable. Um, it's less dramatic. It doesn't... I think Ninja's one cheaper on Grim. 
So, yeah. Oh, um, if but if you have a data, yeah. Generally speaking, it's cheaper. Yes, I agree. Um, if you have a data sucker, I've, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. there are some ice like Grim yeah. you mentioned where Ninja is better, but um, yeah. Specifically, with one strength sucker, five. It's... Like that's it. Right, yeah. Exactly. Um. So okay, so so it's kind of weird because passport I think is weird because so Yogg's really the king, the dominant code breaker. It's king of the hill, and. So a lot of decks have given up on code gates, and in large part they go, okay, I'm going to run just Quandry or just Enigma, and if you don't like, you know, them getting parasited, and you say, okay, you have to install a code gate breaker, and but my deck is minimally invested in them, so you have to install it, and but I'm not going to have to rely on them, but I can punish you if you don't draw it or something like that, and. So that makes Yogg really good. It makes Yogg better because decks shift away from code gates. Um, I think it's a bit... I mean, if you run into, like, uh, RSVP, uh, I think it's better with Inazuma is a fucking house. Oh, uh, do you know what I mean? Is it not okay if I swear? No, it's fine. Yeah, in Inazuma is primarily yeah. the reason actually I, I stopped using Yogg. Yeah. It's it's obviously like the best yeah. ice in the game in my opinion, <laughs> and so I just assume yeah. everyone's so, gonna use it. I mean, I can we agree Jinteki has the best ice hands down? Like that's just a thing now. Uh, I I haven't really sat down and done the numbers, but they have Inazuma, and that is the best ice. So yeah, I guess that's right. Because just to me, uh, like okay, here's the insane thing about Jinteki. So. Sentries are scary. So you're like, I want a Sentry Breaker. That's pretty normal. But the code in Yazuma means code gates lead into unbreakable Sentries. And uh, they have a one or two, like Yagura, it deals net damage. And they go, okay, so I want a Code Gate Breaker and a Sentry Breaker. And their one barrier gets around Parasite and Knight. Because you just take it back into your hand. So, like, I just want a full rig before I start running against any Jinteki Ice, and that's awful. Yeah, um, like you mentioned, it, there's certain rules that you learn when you're playing the game. And uh, I think these are especially true for Runner. You know, like, you need at least three cards in hand to make a safe run. You need uh, you need a Sentry Breaker to guarantee horrible things don't happen, etc. And now, um, Inazuma just kind of broke that rule in a big way. Um, yeah, that, it's that's also why only... I think it's so good. Yeah, it's also only three credits. And there was also a general rule of everything bad costs four. A uh, Roto Turret, Neural Katana, right. uh, Grim is five. But this one is really scary. And so let's say they have a Roto Turret rest and they put a card in front of it. Like, do you, can you break Inazuma? If you can't, can you risk it? Like, that's. I've definitely had that. Ugly. I set up that play before against people. And uh, yeah, it's, it, they run yeah. into it just because they, they have their Femme out and they're not worried about it. I think it was a garrote in that case, actually. So an yeah. another thing if I wanted they, to get into if here is... If they have it is... fimmed, they can bypass it, though, right? Like, if they have... Yes, that, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, because it's not... Yeah, okay, yeah. It's not like RCP. They, it's just you can't break the subs. Um, but it would work on a byroid, too. Um, you know, you want to be able to break oh, yeah. the subs. But so, clicks or... I, I wanted to say one more thing about the, the central-only breakers. Um, I already thought Quest Completed was better than most people, because people said, oh, it's notoriety, notoriety proved not to be good. But Notoriety's... Quest Completed doesn't just give you agenda points. It takes them away from the Corp. The Corp was going to score, and then you said no. Now, the biggest problem with it is you can just miss with it. But using Silhouette's ability to make that not happen is pretty badical. Especially when you're combining it with the prerequisites yeah, and then, of... Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Chris, the who helps co-run San 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 Francisco with me, uh, mentioned this deck the other day, and we were kind of talking about it. And yeah, it, it, in terms of uh, Quest Complete, it definitely seems like the most viable. I'll have to try that out sometime. Something I wanted to go into is, in Honor and Profit specifically, they seem to be pushing the resource criminal. And um, I, you mentioned the term resource swarm to me the other day, which I thought was a great term. But I was wondering yeah, if, you could, so... uh, if you've been playing around with that or if you have any, you know. Um, I'm planning on it. Uh... So, okay, so I'm kind of sticking with what works now because I don't have a Season 1 mat and I'm a huge tryhard. Uh, but I want to... So the idea of this deck, I guess, to step, step back, is you play full-on tag me. You're like, I want to give myself tags, I have class creed, I don't care, whatever. Um, and 
But instead of playing no resources, you play a lot of low-cost resources that do good things for you. But if the corp wants to trash them, then they have to pay, and you're cool with that as well. So John Masanori is super good in this deck. Security testing is the card from Honor and Profit that slides right in. Uh, Fall Guy from uh, Double Time, I think, is no, that's Honor uh, ideal. As well. Oh, Honor and Profit. Oh, no, I think really? you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. It's Double Time. Okay, yes. Uh, you do not use Triumph Contact. That was the one I couldn't think of. And I was like, don't use that in this deck. It'll get blown up. Well, I was thinking about that card, and I think Armitage is just kind of better than Trimoth, unless you're playing to play a really long game. Yeah, no, Trimoth, Trimoth's bad. Don't play. It costs more than Armitage. Oh, Armitage goes in the Resource Swarm deck, probably. Like, it's kind of, yeah, you might sense. cut it. Uh, you can also import DLR and or um, Joshua B. There's like an Anar There's already an, been an Anarch version of this deck for a while. Um... It's just that Criminal never really had anything kind of unique that they could add to it that Anarch couldn't import, but security testing is definitely it. Um, and I think it's also really good with Gabe because security testing naturally synergizes with his HQ run ability because he doesn't have to not access to get that. So you run HQ, you get like four or five if you have Desperado. Um, data suckers. Yeah, so data suckers. Yeah, what so, are you cutting yeah. out of your deck to? I mean, it seems like you have to get rid of events because you can't really change uh, the breakers too much. Yeah. So, so the problem is to do this. This deck, I've played like kind of versions of it, or dipping my toe into it. It's really obnoxious, and I think you definitely gain in terms of raw power. But the things you kind of have to cut are the tricky things, and. I think against really fast advanced decks, like, you need some tricks. Because criminals aren't shapers where they can rig up super well, so they can beat fast advanced decks that way. Um, I think you need to have a trick. You need to have um, special order into night, or you have your inside job, or, you know, on, on back order. Or just you need to have, like, stuff like forged activation order to mess with their math. Um, things like that. And for security testing... Um, you kind of have to get rid of those to make the space. Because you can't cut breakers, you can't cut... You can cut maybe a little core economy. Like, um, maybe you cut... Um, well, no, I don't know, because you definitely keep Dirty Laundry. Yeah, Armitage is the only thing that comes or, to mind that could pop. Yeah, you'd, you'd, yeah, you might cut Armitage. I mean, but essentially you're changing that for another resource. Low impact resource. Um, I haven't really sat down and looked at the deck, because like I said, I'm kind of sticking close to what I've been doing before, um, which I'm afraid makes this podcast maybe a little boring. But um, yeah, it's tough, because I've seen it work pretty well out of Reyna, and I think Gabe's ability naturally lends itself to it. Um, you might cut Sneak Door Beta, but I think at that point Andromeda might be a better fit for the deck anyway, and that might not be bad. You might play it. This, it might be an Andromeda deck. Because uh, you might need the card space and you end up cutting things like um, special or sneak door beta. And then you Andromeda generally rigs a little bit faster anyway. Maybe maybe that's the deck. But um, yeah, yeah, resource criminal is a thing. But I think the way you don't do it is by avoiding tags. I think you take Plascrete and you just kind of don't care if your resources are trashed. Because you go, look, I just account siphoned you. You're, you're kind of, you're hurting now. Unless you're Grindel, but Grindel's awesome. Um, so you're hurting now, and do you want to spend your remaining few resources trashing, like, security testing? Like, did you? Oh, well, you just wasted, like, a full turn getting rid of security testing. I'm going to keep hitting you while you're down. Or you didn't? Well, now I get to flood money because this card's really good if you don't trash it. Uh, and, yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's basically what you do. And I think it's a thing... I don't quite know what the deck exactly looks like yet because I haven't really written it down. What I want you to do sometime soon is I want you to try just replacing the Armitage with security testing because I think your theory uh, is true even if you don't have Fall Guy in the deck. Like security testing is zero to play. It's conditional upon you making a run and all this kind of stuff and they might just not trash it. Um, yeah, the one... So the one thing, the one reason I didn't do that is Armitage in my deck fills a specific role of if I get locked out. Sometimes, as Gabe, I get locked out, and I got locked out when I didn't have much money, 
because I count siphon, but then I spent it because I had to trash sand sands or something, which really sucks. Um, and then they lock me out somehow. And I need to get the money to fund uh, a femme fatale, or I need to get the money to fund uh, installing yogs so I can start blasting, you know, and through R and D for free or something. And security testing does nothing in that scenario. That's where saying, I'm yeah, already behind. Sense. And Armitage is like the emergency catch-up card. I do want to point out that you're complaining about having to trash the corporation's hardly won or, uh, di- you know, they're, they're, they're a sand sand city grid with money that you stole from them. <laughs> Cr- criminals are tr- truly need to check their privilege. They got, <laughs> they got like, they got like crazy good first world problems. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of problem you want to have. But, you know, hey, sometimes it's a problem. Yep. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of, of Gabe post honor and profit? Uh, let me take a look. Oh, so here's, here's a question. How many copies of window did you put in your Gabe deck? Four. So I can leave the tournament early cause I play window and I'll just save both, both some time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like I, I have a rule and is it if you're going to play two bad cards because they work well together, the amount they need to work well together needs to be ridiculously good. Like Scorched Earth and SEA Source aren't very good cards if they're not together, um, or yeah, you know, arguably some other tagging. But but together they just win you the game, so that's that's fine. You can have those four or five dead cards in your deck. I guess the combo was Window Mr. Lee, but just draw two cards. Right. Like, I've never liked Mr. Lee in Criminal, because I feel like Criminal is so not centered around one card that you don't need to card thin for it. Because Mr. Lee isn't card advantage. He, he doesn't give you more cards. He improves the average quality of your draw. And I think the difference between the best and worst card in a Criminal deck is relatively small. And they're relatively not situational. Uh, I think he's better in an Anarch deck. Um, I think with Criminal, like if you want to have card draw, you just get card draw. You just get quality time. Um, yep. uh, I actually think that new event, uh, what is it? Uh, Express Delivery? Right, um, the draw for keep one. That might be a thing. That like that feels like a good effect. Um because well, you know, like you said, it you kind say, of fits yeah. with uh, you know you're saying that criminals have a lot of answers. Like specifically, I'm thinking you need to get into the server now. Um, there's a lot of ways that criminal could help you with that, and so it might be that uh, express delivery plays into that a little bit better. You know, if you need that one card, but you have like five right. of those cards in your deck, just you need one of them. It's a good chance you're going to pick it up. Yeah, and unlike Mister Lee, it doesn't cost as much. And instead of, you know, getting you one extra card, it gets you to look at three extra cards. Um, I think we can say if it put the rest, if you could then put the other three on top of your library in any order, it would be ridiculous. But um, even then, I think Express Delivery is maybe an underlooked card. On the other hand, it might not be worth the card slot. Like, it's certainly a good effect, but you might just put in things that do stuff. I recently was playing against a Shaper, and uh, he played Express Delivery, and I was like, I'm, I'm really curious why you did that. You have to tell me after the game, why didn't you just play Diesel? And I, and I talked to him after the game, and it was because he had three Diesel and three Quality Time in his deck, and he just wanted more card draw, because it was one of those types of decks. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, that might be a thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I I, know. That's, that's an anomaly. Like, I thought that was kind of funny. He just yeah. wanted it because it was, I think it was also just a new card, but um, yeah, I could definitely see this being useful in Anarch, for sure. It's only one influence as well, which yeah. is worth pointing um, out. Can we talk about what Faint is for? I was just looking at that one. So, uh, like, I, okay, okay, I think we agree, the art is super sweet. It's pretty but, great. Um, I have that uh, alt art box that also has that on the oh, side. Oh, yeah, it looks, so, oh, it looks so good. I'm really sad it's not a card that seems playable. So I, I did 
here have a couple interesting use cases. I mean, the most obvious thing is just emergency shutdown. It's a, it's a really expensive way to like guarantee you could tri uh, trigger emergency shutdown, which, okay. But like that True. doesn't seem like it's it's good enough, you know, to earn a card slot. But uh, recently what? there's a, 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 Chris I think was running this deck and he was doing a quest complete thing. And uh, for that, it, this is, it, 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 it's a situational thing. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's a really cheap way, and it's basically a really cheap way in the HQ to trigger those types of effects. Um, but outside of emergency shutdown, I can't think of a really good reason why you'd want it in criminal. Yeah, that really doesn't seem worth a card. Like, you only get 45 of them, and like, that kind of thing where this card is only good if I have another card in my hand, I don't think can afford that kind of situationality I mean, like mm. I mean I guess the argument you can um, uh, plan to salt for it but then you're not getting quest completed because you used a second click right so uh, without yeah, I don't some know. doppelganger I... or some kind of madness like that oh yeah and you're not uh... yeah <laughs> um I think it's yeah, a plan I can't, I can't I, figure I don't out... think like this card obviously has some utility right now but it's very combo-y and I think the, like if it, it, it does, was, it is worth mentioning. If it was security zero, testing, like if it was security zero, testing with I could go making some money. Yeah, that's true. If it was but zero, no, you I can't think it would be way You too can't good. access cards with faint. It does. You can't uh, get security subcontract to fire. Oh, because it it takes over that trigger, right? Because mm -hmm. you have to do it instead of. Okay, so that that um, theory it doesn't work. That yet. doesn't work. Yeah, if it was zero, I could say okay. If I'm Gabe, I get the credits back for playing it. And then a more marginal utility, I'm like, okay, then it'd be kind of like, um, uh, what's that one card? Um, infiltration, where you can trash it to give you back two credits, so it's kind of like you clicked twice for credits. With Faint, you'd be like, okay, with Gabe, it's like I clicked twice for credits, but I might get a Desperado thing, so it might be a... And then, oh, I can get an emergency shutdown off, or I wouldn't... At that point, that might be worth something in some decks but i think as it is it's like i don't i don't even know what it's supposed to do which is i think that's why it is too it shows that the intent for the card is not like a economy card it's it's two because gabe gets two so it really is intended for emergency shutdown and the gun i guess right. and, and effects but, like that like i think if it was zero where you could go okay i can get my run kind of get this one run for free but not get any cards and so i just get a little bit of extra money i mean like I could just play sure gamble, like and get four. Uh, I mean, and that's you know a little bit more conditional. But I think if it was zero, it still might not be that good. Like it, it's a whole card slot, and card slots do mean, you know, if, like in the constructed game, as the card pool gets bigger, card slots mean more and more. And if it was zero, I don't think it'd be worth including. And just making it two makes me really think like, why would you even think about putting it in your deck? As we have more, uh, re, you know, requirements of making a run on HQ, this card will be more interesting. But it's always going to be kind of a combo, combo thing, um, unless we get some runner ID that functions off HQ accesses in another interesting way, like Gabe. It, I mean, it does work with Silhouette as well. It kind of is a expensive expose for Silhouette in some ways, but uh, you're Silhouette, so you don't really need expose effects. Yeah, I actually think that was one of the neat things I saw with that uh, quest completed deck, is you're not you run silhouette, but you're not doing it to like combo and go off with blackguard. You're just kind of doing it because you need to expose for quest completed, and otherwise there is some marginal upside. Like it is nice to expose a card. You're not going to complain when it happens, and that was an angle I didn't really think of. And yeah, no, it's a thing. I think when people see Silhouette and they looked at Blackguard and it was just like, let's make this deck happen. But I, I do like when uh, people step back from those kind of hyper crazy examples or the, these kind of super optimized builds along these these uh, lines of these cards that are released in, and look at the yeah. other cards we have and look at other ways to use those abilities. So I agree. And, and even with Blackguard, I never thought Silhouette needed any yeah. other expose because it just seems like overkill. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, when in Silhouette came out, I, I kind of said, oh, okay, so this is what you do with Black Card. You don't run any other exposed effect, but you just get it with HQ and you can do stuff with Black Card. I still didn't think it was that good, and I don't think it's that, that good to this day, but I didn't think of using Silhouette for Quest Completed. Like, that's super weird. But, yeah, right. yeah props to the guy who thought it up. That's a very cool use, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's good. So the, the Central Breaker deck I was working on, which is, I, I'm guessing other people have had this concept, uh, this deck that probably exists, but it's to just go all in with Parasites. So I, I, I had all the Parasites, Data Suckers, and Clone Ships as well, because like I freed up some influence uh, for not having Breakers like Corroder. So that was the idea, and it was just, you know, like they wouldn't put you, down a melange or something, have... and you can't get in, and it's so annoying. <laughs> what were you going to say? Once. Uh, oh, sorry. I had something happened real quick. Um, so, yeah. So I mean, wouldn't Deja Vu be better than Clone Ship in that situation? If all you want to do is recur parasites and maybe something else. Uh, is that less? Is that one influence? It's not low. It's not lower influence, but it can get back two parasites. I see. Um, I guess you know, so. I mean, may, maybe not because like... it it takes a click. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, yeah, I, I think they're probably close. Yeah. It also, yeah, it, it costs two to use uh, Deja Vu. I think. I, I'm. I, I was. I played a lot of Shapers, so I'm. I have an affinity to clone ship, so I just didn't even think about Deja Vu. But I mean, that could work too. Yeah, anyway, I figured out it's, what it's uh, Faint is for. What's up? Finally, a reliable way to trigger Lumeria Codecracker. Oh, ho, in there. Yep, that's... More exposed. You know I said running two bad cards, can't, like, you can't get by with just a mediocre or even good effect? That right there. But Lumeria lets you literally look at the corpse cards. Do you realize that? Yeah, so does running. Just run. <laughs> and with that, I think we should uh, finish it off. So uh, thanks for joining me for this first of what I hope is many market researches. And uh, is there anything else you want to comment on? Do you, would you like me to hold off posting this until after the Saturday tournament so people don't get your uh, the secret sauce? Ooh, um, nah, post it, screw them. They can like. Okay. I've always felt you can. I want to be able to just show you my entire deck list and still beat you, because yeah. I'm not relying on any like you know. Oh, I play Scorched Earth and HB. Ugh. Like, no, I just, I got solid stuff. It's really good. I'll use it in a smart way and beat you. And that is why you consistently win tournaments here in the Bay Area. So I definitely agree with that. I was really tempted to do, um, oh, like, I don't know, just do, like, a really weird, like, um, what's that card uh, where you, uh, the one where you steal an agenda and you take meat damage for it with a trace. Punitive Counter-Strike. I was like, I want to switch to like a really different Punitive Counter-Strike, North Scorched Earth decks, and then just switch right back. Just just to keep people on their toes a bit, but no, nah, I, I keep it simple. Just keep it simple and keep winning. Alright, thanks for, yep, uh, keep thanks on, for the keep on. discussion. And uh, I'll see you at the tournament. Alright, see you there.